John, once upon a time, there was a driver named Rusty Wallace. He won the 89 championship and dominated Victory Lane in the early 90s, winning 10 races one year and eight the next. And he's had a real good season to this point. He's ninth in points, but his best finish so far is fourth. And that makes Rusty very grumpy. So Rusty Robin and their band of merry men went back to their little workshop and they rolled out this car. Ronnie, a car that finished second and fourth here last year. And they brought it to a track where Rusty Wallace has 19 top 10 finishes in 20 races and three wins. Now, handling is critical here. If you're too tight, you can't get through the middle of one and two. If you're too loose, you'll go through turn four and you'll hit the wall. So these guys are running what I call the Goldilocks setup. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. It's just right. And they hope to live happily ever after, beginning in victory lane this afternoon. Here comes Sterling Marlin lapping Jeff Bodine as Rusty Wallace has dived on to pit road in the Miller Ford. Jerry Punch, he's coming toward you. Well, a three-time winner here. Rusty having a plan to be very, very consistent, very smooth, moving his way toward the front, which is indeed what he was doing. And now make the first schedule pit stop, lap 74 for tires. Remember, they can go 125 to 140 on fuel, but only half that way on tires. Right side tires have gone on. Left side tires have gone on. And Rusty is down in the way. Rusty Here's Wallace. Rusty. And, you know, he's getting a break right now because the second-place car of Terry Labonte is just in some heavy, heavy traffic. Rusty sitting out there running uh, pretty free. He's coming up on Bobby Hamilton there. He put Bobby two laps down. Bobby is in 13th position. Six Chevys, four Fords in the top ten with the Ford leading the race at the moment. Now Rusty's in heavy traffic. Yep, himself. Vincent over on the right, then he'll pass easily going into turn number one. Johnny is two laps down, make that three laps down now at 21st spot. This car looks none the worse for the wear. No tire marks, no beating and banging. You'll not, not have to worry about setting the toe in with a string on pit road. A little bit of a pop there on the left side. Rusty's car looks pretty clean. Well, that's what it takes. Just to have a good, fast car. Ready to dive to the inside. Not yet. That's it. Franfield summary for you. Seven cars on the lead lap. Cap, Rusty Wallace leading 63 of 314 laps, 14 lead changes, only one caution period that lasted for seven laps. We're averaging 102.155. Five bonus points go to these drivers for leading the lap. Terry Labonte has led the most, and Marlon Wallace Presley Shepard, and also Craven, Urban, Andretti, and Musgrave. Those cars out of the race? Nobody. Everybody is still running. And Terry Labonte takes the lead. Once again, a lot of money up for grabs if he can just stay in front. Jerry, what's Rusty's tire wear? Well, Bob, we watched it all afternoon. Rusty says the car is like a scalded dog for about 30 laps, and then suddenly just, just quits, just goes away. Now, he pitted on lap 289. He lost the lead on lap 318. That's about 28 laps. He's just about right. About 30 laps, and the car goes away. I talked to Robin Pemberton in the car number two's pitch, Rusty Wallace, and Robin said, hey, I said, can you run 70 laps today? We can't run 35. Our car goes away. But we made a huge track bar adjustment, three rounds in the right rear, and we might have cured it. We're going to have to roll the dice if the five car stays out. So it just goes to show you what Ned and Benny talked about in the early part of the race. Oh, and John and Freddy in the wall. Becomes a victim of a crash here on the main backstretch. Back stretch. 
Yeah. And look how they go get in the pits with all that water over there. There is a huge amount of water. That uh, was a water barrier to soften the flow, and all the water is dumped out on pit road. And Joe Nemechek has got problems. Yeah, damaged heavily on the right front. The tire is trying to come off the rim, and probably will before he gets back. Wow, what a break for Rusty Wallace, huh? A tough break. There's John Andretti. He's climbed out of his car. He's okay. Rusty is moving, but the front end of the car is all messed up. And since pit road is closed, he will no doubt go into the pits through that water. There was a little bit of a fire that broke out on Andretti's car, but he quickly got out and is obviously okay. But you're right. What are we going to do with all of this water out there on pit road? They we saw Rusty go through the water heading towards the pits. No, that, sorry, that was Nemechek. Let's see what we can, we can see what happened. To the left. Andretti already. And Rush is going to hit Andretti. Yeah. And that's when we see the fire. Wow. <laughs> that is a tough, tough break. And Jeff Bodine makes some contact with John Andretti. And Andretti is trying his best. Ever see Ernie Irvin go by. Now here comes Nemechek. And looks like the Dahlenbach yep. also hit the water. Dahlenbach was the first to hit the water, and then Andretti slid into it, knocking over the barrels. And then right in front of Rusty Wallace, Rusty had no place to go. And this is Rusty's roof. Oh, man. Amazing. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's racing, but boy, a tough pill to swallow for Rusty Wallace, who had the uh, field pretty much covered here, or at least was in the lead. He's coming in, uh, despite the fact that the pits are closed, because it really doesn't mean much. He's just got to go the tail end of the longest line on the restart, that's all. Come in and survey the damage and try to get this car back out there, but Jerry, go ahead. Well, as you can see, heavy damage on the front of the car. Rusty said, hey, just pull the fenders out and put on four tires. And Chris said, no, Rusty, it's worse than that. We're going to have to raise the hood and take a look at it. So he sits on pit road, and they have told the pace car to slow up to give the NASCAR officials time and try to clean up the backstretch area of the pit so others could pit so they could open pit road. But heavy damage on the front of the Miller Ford Thunderbird. Billy Wilbur talking to Rusty. He takes the window net down, pulls the gloves off very disgustedly, and apparently they are going to have to call it a day. Can you believe the kind of luck he had just a few laps ago? And they're going to push the car behind the wall. Yeah, what, it radiator? Radiator. Okay, they said the radiator, the oil pump, everything is gone in the front of the car. They are history. Wow. That is a shame. Well, that was the break he was looking for. A caution flag was the absolute break he was looking for. But he didn't need to be part of it, no. Ironically, his crew chief, Robin Pemberton, has been named the Western Auto Mechanic of the race. And now he's got a lot of work to do. He and the rest of the Miller crew go to work. Man, that, that is just a real they have stopped the fortunate them. situation for they have stopped the pace car over on the second red flag I had a feeling they would they're going to red flag this thing and stop it so that they can uh but now they, they can't work on the two right yeah they said we'll figure out what we need to do well that's one break they can they can at least figure out what they need to go get off the truck, what kind of tools they need. It's red flags. They got some water to clean up over there in the back stretch at the entrance to pit road, so that's the reason for the red flag. Rusty, you climbed out of the car. It looked like you had one. I mean, the car running so well. Oh, man, that's just, uh, it's really upsetting because the car was just that good, and they, something happened coming off a of turn four, and they start spinning down the back straightaway. I went down low to try to avoid it, and the 37 car come across the track, and there's just nowhere to go. When the smoke cleared, there he was. You hit him. It looked like you were trying to get on the brakes, and it looked from us like he was going to stay across the top of the racetrack. I thought he was. I was on the brakes hard trying to get to stop, and I just hit him head on. There's nothing I could do about it. The car was awesome. How bad does it hurt? Oh, yeah, I think it's got the front snout knocked off, but other than that, it was, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty bad right now. 
Rusty Wallace just couldn't catch a break, folks. Thought he had a great one today in Ronnie, and they're going to try to fix the car, but uh, it is heavily damaged here in the garage area. Another look at it from our camera down the uh, backstretch into turn number three. Andretti against the wall comes across. And Andretti hits the barrels of water, and then Rusty hit him. Rusty Wallace has completed the repairs on his Miller Ford and is coming back in the race. And we'll show you a replay of why he suffered the damage. There we see John Andretti. And yeah, listen. In car camera. Out on the racetrack, however, to complete the final laps of this event. 